time, I would like to inform the public that 53 persons have been interviewed up until today. There are eight others that remain to be interviewed. Certain employees are being called back for further interviews, and the school attorney has requested additional investigation in several areas. I hope that the community understands that we cannot rush to judgment, as that might interfere with the outcomes of any proceedings that may follow. It is the board's goal to have a full and fair investigation conducted, and that process does take time. A, the next status report on this is expected within the next few weeks. Thank you. Our next item on the agenda is public discussion and comment on agenda items. Just a small bit of housekeeping at this time. Um, the board will allocate up to one half hour for public comment on agenda items. We inadvertently um, did not add public discussion on non-agenda items to the agenda that will be added by a motion later on this evening. Comments shall be limited to five minutes in duration per speaker, whether speaking individually or on behalf of an organization. All statements should be directed to the board. No participant may address or question board members individually. Speakers may comment on matters of public interest involving school operations and programs, but may not criticize or personally attack persons connected with the school district. There are copies of the public comment procedures out in the hallway. Also part of our procedure is to take um, the comments from the people that turned in requests to make public comments to the board clerk. They'll be taken in the order in they were received, and if there is time after the half hour has been allotted for others that want to speak that did not set, uh, turn in anything to the board clerk, that will be permitted at that time, and you would be asked to step to the podium and give your name and address. We will start with Art Plitka. My name is Art Plitka. I teach at NFA. I have been a teacher in the district for 25 years. In March of 2009, I was invited to come to the school board meeting to receive a commendation from the superintendent because I had received national board certification. During that same meeting, the NFA basketball team received a commendation for becoming state champions. At the time, we at NFA knew these athletes were cutting classes and still playing, and the code of conduct rules were not being followed. This has been going on for a long time. Please think back to our former track star who graduated seven years ago and was indulged by the administration to his own detriment. Whenever the delegates uh, to the NTA met with the principal and asked about athletic attendance and how student athletes were able to participate with cuts, we received the reply that that was just a perception. It really wasn't true, and the coaches are very careful to monitor attendance and follow the rules. The difference in 2009-10 was that the district started using Infinite Campus, and the attendance records were available for all teachers of a given student to see. We could no longer be fooled by the lies. The actions of the administration this past year were not an aberration. They were the norm. Please check out the attendance from previous years, as well as summer school. Students who were athletes were given preference to attend summer school, even if their attendance would have disqualified them. And they were permitted to be absent from summer school to attend basketball camp, allowing them to be absent from class more than would normally be allowed. And it is not just about sports. There is an arrogance of power in the administration and NFA, 
that does not want to be held accountable. The delegates have asked the administration for consistency among administrators as far as discipline is concerned, and we have been told that that is not possible. Why are some kids held to looser standards? Connections, athletic ability, classes they are attending? Why are some allowed to attend the prom when their attendance record should preclude it? We cannot blame the kids. Kids will always try to push the limits. If you have teenagers, you know that's, they think that's their job. But it's our job to enforce proper behavior and standards and not indulge poor behaviors. It is the job for all of us at NFA to model appropriate behavior and act with integrity. There are huge problems at the high school because cell phone rules and the dress code rules are not enforced by administration. The rules are considered a joke by students. It was bad last year and the delegates at NFA surveyed the staff about how they felt administrators were handling discipline in the school. I would like to hand the results of that survey to the board, if I am so allowed. You may give them to the board clerk who will distribute them. Thank you. I would suggest that this strategy might be a better way to get information rather than sending intimidating letters for disciplinary hearings. This year the problems with cell phones have gotten much worse. It is very possible for students to photograph tests and send them on to other students, as well as tweet about specific questions on tests. To deal with the real problems we face at the high school, we need leadership that has integrity, shows fairness to students and staff, and consistently enforces the rules and the code of conduct. My fear is that the board and the central administration will do nothing but try to sweep it under the rug, try to spread out the blame. If you do that, you will be doing a disservice to the staff at NFA that is trying very hard to educate our young people, and a disservice to the students, teaching them that they don't have to play by the rules, just know the right people. Please give us an administration that will work collaboratively with teachers, that is real and fair and will raise the bar in education for all of our students so they can achieve to their potential knowing that they succeed from their own efforts. Thank you. Thank you for your comments, Mr. Klipka. They've been